Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanolith Zedon. I remain Chad Fury333, your host, and now we have a match between Aquanim and Orphelius on Adansonia, which should hopefully be a bit better than... Well, okay, it's going to be better than the last game. Neither of these players is probably going to do something quite so silly as Roach Bomb over and over and over and over again, even though it doesn't work. Orphelius, however, speaking of which... Actually, both players going for shield. So, a bit apropos, I suppose. But, yeah, both players going for shield. This... Starting out Dirtbag and Bandit. Okay, fairly typical stars. Nothing too unusual. Mind you, like I said, neither Orpheus nor Aquanim I know to be particularly cheesy players all the time. Like, that insist on doing, like, compulsive cheesers. I guess that's a way of referring to Shaman. Shaman's a compulsive cheeser. But yeah, Aquanim and Orpheus are usually a bit more normal in their play. Though apparently Aquanim is not too familiar with this map, so we'll see how that plays out. I'm not, not sure what to expect. But I was just told by Orphelius that Aquanim is not, or was not that familiar with this map during this game. I mean, it kind of makes sense that both players went for shield. I mean, admittedly, the thing with Adansonia V4, so anyone who's seen the earlier Adansonia games, that was version 2. This is version 4, which has, what's going on? which has this, like this whole sandbar right here. This entire sandbar here is new. It allows for units to go up here and around and hit these expansions, although admittedly there's also now an extra five metal extractors. Actually, these are new as well. So there's a bunch of extra metal extractors, and there's a giant sandbar leading up to it. That allows you to fairly easily get to those other metal extractors. Both players going shields is interesting. I'm not sure, I mean, Aquadem's case, if they're not familiar with the map, they might not think Amphib is, our great, Amphib is a great idea. With the sandbar here, it does make it seem less useful since you can't just drop into the water that easily. However, there is still a lot of water to work with. And there are still canals and inlets. There are ways, and fjords in this case. There are still ways in. This is a cool map. I like this map, personally. I actually haven't played V4 yet, though. I played V2. I haven't played V4 yet. V2 is... It's quite fun. V4 looks like it's going to be even better. So Orphelius already going for actually quite an economic boost. I'm not sure why Akronim... I guess Akronim is being more defensive, looks like. They haven't quite set up their economy yet. They should fairly soon, though. So Akronim doing a pretty decent job here. I mean, setting up their defense. Orphelius setting up for a bit of an attack, which shouldn't get through the defenses too easily, though Akronim's they're kind of overextended. They've gone from not building up very much to now almost overextending. They're definitely confident. They're trying to capture these metal extractors and then go back and take the three in the northeast corner afterwards. Once they've taken the ones up front. Just to have a bit of a defensive line. That's not atypical. Orphelius, on the other hand, kind of building up more from the south up. Rather than from sort of their side out. As Aquinum is doing. Neither player particularly confident they can win a fight, though. We saw one dirtbag, like, dirtbag bandit fight, and that's about it. Everything else up to this point has been nothing. Like, there's nothing. Bandit's just sort of hanging around here, not sure what to do. They're sitting for orders. Oh, never mind. Aphelius is going to do something. Are they? Maybe? I don't know. Looks like no. Shoot. Actually, ooh. Okay, never mind. There is a roach going along the sandbar. That's got a nice target, actually. But it looks like, no, it's not going to be used offensively. I mean, what am I expecting? It's never used offensively. However, a roach on this sandbar? This is... This is vehicle... Like, this is bot pathable. This water here... Once it actually shows me. This is bot pathable. Like, bots can go through it a bit slowly. And they'll probably prefer going on land. But that's shallow enough water that robots... That bots that aren't amphib bots can go through it. And now, Akram finally going for the attack. What? Well, frontal attack, standard assault. Pretty much just a probing attack. Not really going to find out too much, though. There already are a fair amount of defenses. Akram, on the other hand... Actually, it looks like their defenses have kind of weakened. Like, they haven't... They've built a defense at the start of the game, and that's about it. Not much since then. Orphelius, however, taking the center pretty strongly. And Akram not going around for the sandbar attack. Not really expecting the center. And Akram does, however, have that center expansion. Roach hasn't done much, though. Aye.
Oh, Isle of Grief. Okay, so they're talking about a bunch of stuff about hilliness and size. And like, I like hilly maps. I don't understand what the fascination with flat maps is in this game. It just bugs me. Flat maps are so boring. I mean, like, height mechanics and line of sight are a big deal in this game. Having flat maps as the main maps really doesn't do that justice. At all. Makes it very difficult to tell what's going on. Or rather, sorry, makes it difficult to tell what's worth doing besides just having units. Like, that's boring. There's no tactics to that. But Ophelius does have quite the army. What's Akunum coming? Oh, okay. Akunum switching off. Wait, are they? Nope, not roaches or anything. Banshee with Valkyries. What are the Valkyries being used for? I don't see any real droppable units, so I'm not sure what the Valkyries are used for other than maybe for decoys. I mean, they're fairly cheap, as I recall. Yeah, 80, me or 80 metal. That's not bad. It's cheap enough. Oh, for crying out loud game. 80 metal is fairly cheap, but it's... I don't see why they'd be decoying with that. They've got to be dropping something. What are they dropping? Ah, there we go. There's the roaches. They're going for roach bombs, too. That'll be interesting. Oh, I see. That makes... Okay, so they already had... What the... Oh! You can do outlaw drops effectively. That's cool. Kind of... Probably should have unloaded the outlaw first, though, rather than having it just fall to its death. I'm not sure if they meant to do that. But at least pushing back the forces. But However, they are revealing that they are going for air, or they have gone for gunships. While Akinem, well, Akinem did that. Orphelia is also going for gunships, and going for tridents, and able to basically deal with everything. Because tridents are quite effective at this. So Akinem right now is still kind of behind. And it looks like we are seeing Roach Bomb, though. Kind of hidden. Wisely using the Rapier and Banshee to scout out for it, just to figure out where a Roach Bomb could even attack from. Ooh. Nice Roach by Akinem. Not the best, but still not terrible. That's the first Roach Bomb. Unfortunately, the second Roach Bomb about to get blown up. Ooh, that, did that roach even do anything? Was that not even a roach bomb? I thought there was a roach in there. Cannot easily tell if there's a roach in one of those Valkyries, unless you look at the bottom. And no, these Valkyries are empty. So yeah, more decoy Valkyries. Okay, that's a better way of doing roach bombs. This is kind of how you do roach bomb. Though Black Dawn is a switch out for Akronim, not going to go for roach bombs too much longer. And nicely slowing down all these banshees. Actually, I suppose it kind of makes sense. Okay, it's not just decoy for roaches. It's decoy for anything. It's messing up targeting for everything. For the banshees, for rapiers. For I mean, okay, banshees not a big deal. For rapiers, it would be a big deal. For tridents, it'd be a small deal. Because tridents fire quite frequently. Now, I could have... No. Still behind economically. Actually, why have they not built this up? What the heck's going on? That must have been a misclick. They must have accidentally done that. Because they clearly wanted to build there. They must have accidentally like double-clicked all their workers or something and then moved them forward. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what happened. So at this point, Orphilius still considerably ahead. The Black Dawn doing some decent job holding the front line. Good rapier scouting. So Akuma knows what's going on. There's a decent idea what's going on, but the Trident's causing more than their share of grief. And Trident's coming in for Aquanum, that's their counterforce. So they're going to use to deal with these Tridents. More Tridents! Ooh. Another Roach. Oh, it looks like a really... Shoot, I missed that. Didn't expect the Roach to do anything, but it looks like it actually did a fair amount of damage. To Orphelius' forces. Like, it did damage to the right side. It didn't just blow itself up. And another roach drop coming in. Okay, how easy is it to see that it's a roach drop? Eh, not very. Although if I select them... Well, that almost worked. Did some damage, but hit the felon directly. And as we saw last game, hitting the felon directly is a good way to lose your roach bomb. But it looks like Akronim just 
still going for roaches. A lot of roaches. Today has been the day of roaches. I'm not entirely surprised. They are fairly reliable units, but yeah, it's still odd. And the Black Dawn coming in. Ooh, can it, can it kill? No, it cannot. It just died. It's not what Orphelius wanted. Sorry, what Akinem wanted. It is what Orphelius wanted, that's for sure. Not what Akinem wanted, though. How many roaches does Akinem have? Just going roaches on repeat. Ah, okay, Akinem throws in the towel. And that is game, and I don't know why everything's going so slowly. But yeah, that is game. Right, so, that was okay. Wasn't, it was pretty straightforward. Kind of yeah, that is that. The next game is going to be between, like I said, Never and Dorsch on Cooper Hill. That'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.